Ben Lobo in the Bing Lounge. I think only Ole will suffice after yeah. that, guys. <laughs> That's it. You know, when I'm when I when we're listening to your music, I, I'm just thinking of sort of darkened forests and campfires and, and all that kind of thing. You both of you started with such so much different uh, musical infusions and ideas, and and you were inspired by so many different things. Willie. Uh, the violin, obviously, is your instrument of choice, and for Lobo, the, the guitar. Now, Willie from Texas and you, I have to give a shout-out to the fact that you did sit down and play with Greg Allman and Dickie Betts. So yeah, that that's, fun. yeah, so it's definitely a, a kind of a lineage that we can relate to. But uh, you took in all kinds of stuff. What was your road like oh, man. for music? It was... Uh started out as a concert master of the high school orchestra you know Never i worked all the way through that <laughs> and um i hadn't improvised up to that point and then uh it was the early 70s you know and a little little this little that and i started flying you know with my music you know <laughs> i don't know it was what like a bird about. who left the nest and i never <laughs> landed since <laughs> Well, well, seeing you play that violin is really something else. And for you, Lobo, you, you're, uh, I think you're an influence, Manitas de Plata, the gypsy That's guitar. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, but you were in Germany, somewhere so much further away. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I mean, it's not a continent, but uh, in our times, it's nothing. Okay. So I went to, the, to live with the gypsies in, uh, when was it, 76. I went down to Granada. And uh, stayed at the Sacramonte Mountain, which is like an uh, area with caves. It sounds primitive, it's not. It's very beautiful. It's right in front of the Alhambra. And uh, I stayed there for a year, and uh, well, I hanged out with the gypsies, and that's where I got that uh, kind of music going, you know. So it was like an infused, kind of a really learning experience for It you. was a learning experience, but not in a way of, of like... Uh, like, uh, like, say, uh, it's a, a living experience, you know, because the gypsy, they don't tell you how to play, you know. You ask them and, and they say, okay, and they play, and they say, slow, slow, please. Okay, slow. <laughs> and after a while, you give up, you know, so you, you understand uh, you have to uh, get it. Kind of soak it in. Yeah, soak it in. That's, that's. Uh, I guess I the next question would be, how did the two of you ever find each other? It was in San Miguel de Allende. Shangri-La or hell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite a bit of partying in those days. <laughs> and uh, that was the hell part <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> but do you remember that first time that you saw each other where you did something catch your eye or you stumble into each other or what was it? I was playing in the salsa band in the bar and Lobo was playing in the patio. Uh, beautiful. We used, you know, they used to ride their carriages through because, like I said, it was the 1700s. And, and, um, and I would go and listen to him play and I said, well, you know, and then one day we said, come up here, let's try it. And we, it was almost like a, I don't know if you know what a MIDI chord is, but it, it was almost like we were connected and it, and it was like the very first time and we were playing licks like riffs together and it blew my mind really. So we had this Im immediate link musically. Yeah, it was kind of funny, you know, I was playing flamenco solo guitar in the patio, very romantic and everybody was eating. And he comes out and say, and I look over at him, and, <laughs> and he looks at me and says, come over here, let's play. So we started playing just like that, you know. And people were eating like that, and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> I never forget that. It was I kind know. of totally, you know, whoa. You know? <laughs> and then, well, he left, and left for New York for two years, and I didn't see him again, so that was our first meeting. <laughs> That's a whole nother story. It's a whole nother story. But then you all, but then s clearly you've, you've managed to, to keep it together. I wonder, you live still in different places. How do you keep that? Do you say, I'm going to come together, let's get together every three months, every couple of months. How does that work for you guys? Well, we use the internet. Oh, that thing, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Send each other uh, things you've been working on, you mean? <laughs> Well, we did take some time off. I mean, uh, we, we toured heavily, f you know, and went through diff four or five different recording contracts with Atlantic Records, EMI, uh, Narada, um, you know, 
uh, all the world yeah kind of it was music places yeah. a lot of work a lot of recording mm -hmm. and then we retired y yeah yeah and it's and been, but it's been a while since you've toured yeah that was Doesn't 2008 but yeah. now we do it like share it's our second back come back <laughs> tour, <okay? laughs> you keep coming back we, and we, we're gonna do seven okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, six more to go i wanted you to talk a little bit about the re-release of playing hard because it's one of those classic things this album it was really a cassette so tell me about playing hard yeah. well it was a cassette which originally was designed for supporting our surfing lifestyle. <laughs> but what really happened is we, we were surfing all day long. And, at ni and when we set out at the break, we hum certain tunes. And at night we went to Mamma Mia restaurant at the Malikon in Puerto Vallarta and tried those tunes. And we had a ball, no? So everybody was asking us, can we, can we buy that music? But in those days, the focus was more on surfing than on music. So we said, well, well, let's record something. So we recorded uh, a tape and we reproduced it on a ghetto blaster, just <laughs> one by one, you know. In those days, they had the high-speed uh, ghetto blasters, so 24 hours, even if you were sleeping, suddenly they click and somebody grabbed and put a new cassette <laughs> in. And, and the next day we sold them. We sold them. We couldn't make enough to sell them. So then we did it commercially. We recorded it really nice on a fast X in those times and we made 500 cassettes and we had another 500 cassettes and so but this tape gave us actually the the record deal it ended up in the uh, mailbox of a musical lawyer which sent it to mesa recordings and they come came down the president the vice president <laughs> to check us out and they they listened to our night at the restaurant you know it was always packed the restaurants they had lines around the block to get in so they listened to it and said yeah we are interested can we talk and we said no uh, the surf's up we we don't have time <laughs> <laughs> so we took him to the surf break it was funny and we set him in a cave uh -huh. there was a cave and one was negotiating the other one was surfing and then we took turns <laughs> they never forget that in their whole life they were sitting yeah. like two, two executives uh, sitting in a cave and one was surfing by and the other. <laughs> in this time, uh, Robert James Waller was riding the bridges of Madison County every night when he come in to hear us play. And yeah, so and so the next book he wrote was um, Puerto Vallarta by Art to squeeze. squeeze. And we were s characters in the book. It started out with this guy Lobo. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> plays a, a, a mean flamingo a mean guitar, fl <laughs> and his partner Willie, tall, gangly guy, balding a little, balding early. a little early. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, with a, plays the violin with a uh, mean, mean imitation of a, yeah, desk, of a death mask, a death know. death mask yeah. on my face. <laughs> ah, you know, that's how he described it. And you guys haven't changed a bit. But you're still musical gypsies, it sounds like to me. That hasn't changed at all. Well, and now Playing Hard is available as a CD, right? Or is it yes, only cassette? Yes, we re-edited re on a CD. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good quality. <laughs> and uh, it's really, I think, it's the best we did, from my opinion, from the heart, you know. Yeah. Because it's, it was like we were young and dumb, and you know, you know so it was like... Uh, Life it was is good. us, you yeah, know. Yeah. That's why we call it the original. That's where all that music, which we later recorded, ten CDs on major labels. But uh, this was the essence. This was what what we. It was our sound pure. It's and a live and recording. we can hear that, yeah, and we can hear that in its essence. Uh, and at the Aladdin tonight, I would love to invite you to play some more music for us, Willie and Lobo, in the Bing Lounge. <laughs> 